Well, hello and welcome to this week's broadcast. I am Anne LaFollette, a service pattern designer, online educator, and creative entrepreneur. And over the course of the summer, I am going to be sharing this summer spotlight series on some of the students from my Pattern Design Academy program. And you are in for a real treat. I wanted to let you know that sometimes these videos will be broken up into two parts so that they're not too long and you have an opportunity to see as much as possible of these students' stories and the work that they're now producing as surface pattern designers. Each of their stories is truly unique and I can't wait to jump right in. So let's get started. Super excited to introduce you to Susan Palmer. First of all, thank you, Susan, for joining us this morning. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us sort of where you are in the world. And okay. um, let's just start there. All right. Well, I live in Stanwood, Washington, which is about an hour north of Seattle. And I've lived in Washington most of my life. I went to college in Santa Barbara, California, and I lived a short time for about seven years in Portland, Oregon, and now I'm back up in the Northwest. When did your creative journey start? Basically, as a child, anybody that asked me what I wanted to be as I got older was I wanted to be an artist. So I've always had that need to create and uh, as a young girl, I was into calligraphy, and then in high school, graphic arts. College, I majored in photography. And when I was in Portland, Oregon, there was an amazing quilt shop called Daisy Kingdom. It's no longer around, but I'm sure people still remember it. And that's where I took my first quilt class and fell in love with touching and feeling fabric and the beautiful colors and what you could do with cutting up a piece of fabric and make an amazing quilt. So tell us a little bit more about this, this love of fabric and quilting. So I've been quilting for over 30 years now. And in 2007, I was working for the phone company. And like you, I got laid off. They closed my department and moved it to California. And I took my little nest egg and I bought a long arm quilting machine at that time and started long arm quilting. And there's a group of ladies on the island that's adjacent to me, Camino Island, and they make these amazing quilts for a state park on the island. And just as just because of the timing and everything, I was lucky enough to get the contract to quilt all their beautiful tops. So I do the quilting for them. They give them to the park, and the park uses them in their cabins and also sells them once a year at a quilt show to raise money for events at the park. So tell us about the your overall business because there are different, a lot of different components to what you do. There are. So you can only quilt so many quilts in a day. <laughs> so there, I had to do something else. And luckily I fell into being a fabric representative for a couple of different fabric, fabric companies. And my territory is Oregon and Washington. So I travel the the whole states takes me nine hours to get to the bottom of Oregon from where I live. And I visit amazing quilt shops and sell them the fabrics that they, that they have. So it's pretty exciting. Before we go to your website. So first mm -hmm. of all, congratulations mm -hmm. on your website going live. I think you said earlier this week. So we're going to go spend some time there. You also have a very exciting announcement about very, very exciting announcement to make about this collaboration you have with a company in Montreal. But before we get there, people love show and tell. So show us a little bit. I know you went downstairs to pick up some things. So I'm going to turn it over to you and talk to us about what well, you want to show us. I thought you guys would like to see an actual collection from a quilt shop or a quilt company. So if you look real closely, I'll try to. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. So this is how the collection gets shown to the quilt shop. Right. This one I would say was the, the main fabric 
the hero. Fabric. Yep. And, your fabric. and then you have your secondary fabrics and then even, you know, your, the blender prints, yeah, blender prints. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So colorways, you can see there's a couple different colorways here that they've put together, but they all still work really nicely together. And then I also, uh, another group that's batiks. Wow. Wow. Those are amazing. Right. I think so, that while you hold that, well, so give us, this is so incredibly valuable to get your perspective on when you go to the quilt shop with this, to walk us through the process. Like what, what does your, what does a visit to a shop when you're traveling to your territory? What does that visit look like? Well, every, every shop is different, of course, but basically I come in with a couple of suitcases full of fabric and I bring them out and I put them out on a table and they just go through them and they decide which ones they want and uh, which ones they don't. The biggest thing I'll show you, I was just looking at it. Oh, this the one. Birds. Yeah, the birds are gorgeous on the on That's that one. Cool. But, oops, upside down. But something to think about is a lot of shops will say, well, this is directional. It's beautiful, but it's directional. And they have a lot of hard time with direction. They want something that is more of an all over. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so, and so, Susan, you can definitely sit down, sit back down again so we can see your beautiful face. So <laughs> one of the things that is so incredibly valuable about what you just showed us is it just brings kind of to life this concept around collections and so tell us like why do quilt shops want to buy from collections tell us their perspective why do they want to buy from collections it's the easiest way to fill their shop for one thing a lot of shops will go okay i'll take that whole collection other shops want to go through every single piece of fabric and pick and choose. And then yeah. I imagine there's also, if they're trying to put themselves in the, in the, in the shoes of the person coming in, who's trying to put something together that would have elements that might not be all from one collection, but might be from a color story. Right. They might have a certain color that they've run out of the fabric. So they're looking for oranges or they're looking for purples or something like that. Yeah. So when you go from shop to shop, how much time are you able to spend in the shop itself? The shops usually run, the, the appointments usually run about three hours. Okay. So you're so, definitely in the space. So you, cause I'm curious about, and I know I totally didn't prepare you for going down this road. So t it's totally <laughs> fine. We can go, we can go to your website next, but it's so incredibly valuable to, cause you are, you're like, you're in the shop. And so yeah. do you notice a real difference shop to shop about how they either display or how they are just, uh, how you know, how they display and so how they're trying to attract their customer, the ultimate buyer of the fabric? Absolutely. There's some shops that want everything light and bright and exciting. You know, K Facet and Tula Pink are big in shops right now. So if you guys want to go look up their designs, get an idea. And then there's other shops that want to go retro, go back to the Civil War era, and they're looking for things that fit that, you know, perspective. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's such a great, that's such a great example of how many possibilities there are for us as yeah. fabric designers, right? Because there's somebody out there that wants what we are making and what we're creating in terms of our one-off prints or our collections. And they never buy the same fabric twice. And the fabrics are, what I'm showing them arrives in their shop about six to eight months later. So they're always shopping, you know, months ahead of time before you see it. And they're always looking for something new. It's available for anybody to jump in. So and, tell us a little bit about what's behind you because you have two beautiful things, to totally different <laughs> things behind you. Okay, well, this is a piece I did a few years ago from a lavender 
festival and swim, I took a picture of some pine cones. And I don't know if you can see it, but I, I quilted in some lavender stems in here. Yeah, so those and are quilted, right? Those lavender stems. It's so gorgeous. I mean, I can we can see them beautifully. We can't see, we can't touch the dimensionality of them, but they're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And then this is all pieced. So lots of itty bitty pieces of fabric in that. Yeah. Uh, so each of those little pine cones is a different piece of fabric that you put together, right? In that to make the pine cone shape. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then this, I'm working on a new pattern. It, this is a disappearing nine patch that I actually, somebody at, in Kama Beach was making disappearing nine patches. And I got the idea that it'd be fun to do an argyle quilt using that method. And so I'm creating a new pattern that will hopefully be, it's a good beginner pattern. So Pamela Fries Fredrickson says, I can tell what kind of fabrics a shop will have by the background music they're playing. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> right. I mean, it's the whole vibe, right? I mean, when you have a yeah. store, yeah. you know, when you have a physical space, it's everything from the music they're playing, the lighting they have, the, the, dis the way they want to display and the ultimately how they want to kind of differentiate themselves in the marketplace to attract their customer. Are you doing online visits or ha have you been able to do online visits and how has that translated because people may want to touch the fabric or, or certainly your shop owners probably touch everything you bring in? <laughs> so I have done some, a few visits in the store. Lysol is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Online, I have done some Zoom calls with customers. It's kind of harder because, you know, just like we're doing here, it's even though I try my best to show the fabrics, it's it's a little difficult. But we also, my couple of my shops, they are they've been sending out catalogs to the ladies, to the quilt on, quilt owners. Most of them are ladies, and because they know our product, the quality of our product. They, they're used to the feel and the, the touch, so they they, they, they trust you because they've had they have a long term relationship with you. Exactly. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. That so, makes sense. so we get those quilt shops because they need your support. So we, you and I both talked about, and you highlighted a beautiful directional print, which is one that's linear, had the trees on it and the beautiful birds on it, and yeah. you made the comment that some of the shops think it's gorgeous, but it's limiting in how it can be used unless it's something that is going to be like a long curtain or something like that. And so an all over print or a toss print, right. which means that you can put it in any direction and it still looks beautiful, is just easier for the sewist, right? How would you Especially explain that? Patterns. So sometimes you make a triangle and you'll put it up and it's like, oh, they're going completely different and they fight with each other in right. the composition. So it's another factor that you have to take into consideration. I still love directional quilts. I love stripes, especially Pam will know on bindings. Stripes on bindings are amazing. So I, you know, one of the things going through your class and, and trying to start making collections, I've decided that I want to put a stripe in every one of my collections just as a little signature. Yeah, so. I love that. That's brilliant. Totally brilliant. The other thing that you mentioned was that I wanted to go back to was disappearing nine patch. Nine patch. So talk more okay. about that. All right. So this is a nine patch. It, it's basically three, it's nine blocks sewn together. And then when you cut them apart, nine patch disappears and you can change it. So it just totally looks different. And so they call this design a disappearing nine patch. Fun. So just by the way you place the quilt. So, but I, this one is super simple. I'm just putting a, a stripe in the middle of it. I'm going to turn it on a diamond and make it look like an argyle. Fantastic. Okay, so talk about your wall. What do you have on your wall that is allowing you to do that demonstration for us? <laughs> this is called a design wall. And if you actually go to my YouTube channel, I did a 
two and a half minute video on how to make a design wall. I can just stick them up there or if I feel like it's too heavy, I can pin into it. And it's amazing. It's the best thing you can do for yourself as a quilter designer. That's awesome. That's totally awesome. Stay tuned for part two, which we'll be publishing next week. I don't want you to miss the second half of this fabulous student spotlight. And so I will see you then. I always like to say in closing that I am Anne Follett, and it's never too late to create. Bye for now, and I'll see you next week. If you enjoyed this broadcast, don't forget to pop over to my website, annelafollettart.com, and you'll land on a page that looks like this. If you scroll down just a little bit, I'm always highlighting in this banner area something new that's happening in my business or something that I would love for you to explore. And so always pop over here and check this area out. In addition, if you scroll down a little bit further, I'm always changing up my offerings in order to serve you best and continue to share the latest and greatest information about the surface design industry and how you can craft a career that you love in pattern design. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you can follow me on Instagram and then also pop over to my YouTube channel. And I would love for you to hit the red subscribe button as well as the little bell so that you're notified whenever I have a new broadcast. Thank you so much for being a part of my creative community and bye for now.